What can you do against blurry images when using a microscope? So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rope Hunter here, Oliver here. Yes, uh, there are a few questions that uh, kind of keep on reappearing over and over again. Uh, either I get emails or uh, people comment uh, in my YouTube section and uh, post those questions. And in this case, uh, one person was uh, asking, what are some possible solutions when the image of a microscope is blurry? And honestly, this is a huge question because uh, there can be so many different answers. And uh, I've uh, essentially brainstormed a few ideas here. Well, a few ideas, uh, that's good. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different uh, possibilities. And each one of them, or almost each one of them, um, yeah, there are several uh, solutions to them. Um, so it's a, it's going to be probably a slightly longer um, episode this time because I want to actually go quite quite deep and and uh, explore all of the the possibilities in order to give you a quite a comprehensive um, answer. Yeah, uh, towards the very end of the um, of this episode, I'm going to tell you a little trick uh, of what you can do to uh, make sure that the image appears to be crisp and sharp, um, even though. Um, it might not quite be quite as perfect because there's one thing that you can do and it is not using Photoshop uh, to sharpen the image. There's something else uh, you need to do a little bit more. I'm going to tell you at the very end. So yeah, um, I'm going to give you a quick um, a quick overview of uh, the different topics that I'm going to talk about here. Um, so the six topics here are, is, uh, first of all, the maybe you are already at the limit um, of uh, what the microscope is able to resolve. So that's the first one. Um, the second one is uh, the problem of a low contact contrast. Uh, the third point is uh, a, a specimen that is not flat, not completely flat. Um, the fourth uh, point is uh, some problems with specimen preparation. That's going to be a pretty technical one here. It has to do something with the thickness of the cover glass and the mounting medium. And then um, two, uh, two quite common ones uh, which are kind of surprising is um, there might actually indeed be a little bit of dirt on the objective but don't just start cleaning quite yet. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this uh, as well. And the last point is the whole issue with immersion oil in the case of uh, an oil immersion objective. And what you can do is, is you can basically rule out uh, point by point to the different problems that you have and uh, if you rule them out and the image quality still does not improve then probably um, yeah it won't improve any further or there's another fundamental problem that I even I didn't think uh, think of well um, so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to start right at the beginning um, and um, it's actually bad news, really, <laughs> because maybe uh, the first point, maybe, uh, yeah, that's all your mac microscope is able to resolve and uh, simply your expectations are, are too high. So maybe sometimes the image is blurry because, well, it's it's blurry because uh, it, basically uh, my, the microscope is able not uh, is not able to resolve any uh, much more. And I need to explain this a little bit. Now, when you look at a, a microscope objective and if you look at the things that are printed on the microscope objective, um, then there are a couple of numbers that are kind of important. And one of the numbers is, uh, of course, the magnification. It's usually the large four for four times or ten for ten times. Then there is usually the number 0 0.17 written on it. And this is the thickness of the cover glass, which I'm going to be talking about this uh, just in a couple of minutes. Um, and then there is um, also, some, in some cases, there is the number 160 written on it. That's the standard used. It's a 160 millimeter standard. Um, some higher end microscopes also have an infinity sign on it. These are the different standards. But also that is not so important. Uh, rather, it's, it's a so-called numerical aperture. And this is a decimal value, which is also printed on the objectives. And this uh, essentially tells you the resolution of the microscope objective. Well, actually, it's not the resolution directly, but you have to plug it into a formula. And then with a wavelength of light uh, as well, then you can determine and calculate the, the resolution um, of uh, this particular microscope objective. And uh, one of the things that you need to know now is, is that uh, the numerical aperture value, of course, is larger the higher the magnification. So for example, for the 100 times oil immersion objective, uh, in many cases, it's around 1.25 or something like that. Um, however, uh, even though the resolution is higher, the magnification of the objective increases faster than the numerical aperture. So this means that uh, at higher magnifying objectives, the image will appear more blurry than at the lower magnifying objectives. 
um, even though the resolution is higher. It, it, it's kind of, uh, I know, a little complex maybe, but you have to understand that uh, the numerical aperture is not able to keep up, uh, so to say, with uh, the magnification of the objective. And this means that, uh, especially when you're using, let's say, the 40 times or 100 times oil immersion objective, the specimen will appear to look blurrier and less crisp than at a lower magnification. Um, that is not, it's not only because of the numerical aperture and the resolution, but also because the depth of field is lower, but that's a different topic. Um, at least uh, what I want to say here at the first point is, is, is maybe don't be disappointed. Uh, maybe where you are already at the limit of what uh, your uh, light uh, is able to produce or deliver. Because after all, microscopes, uh, just uh, as well as, as telescopes, both of these are so-called diffraction limited devices. And uh, this means that uh, we are already operating at the limits of physics, so to say, and at the limits of what light is able to produce uh, you know, concerning clarity. And uh, yeah, from a certain magnification onward, um, it's, uh, it doesn't even make sense to have a yet higher magnification because the image becomes yet more blurry. So this is basically the first thing. So maybe we just have to lower our expectations some uh, sometime, uh, sometimes and, and maybe to go down with, uh, the, um, with the magnification a little bit and then have a picture that uh, appears to be subjectively to be a little bit more crisp. So that is uh, the first one. Now I want to move on a little bit, and uh, the next point is also quite uh, you know, extensive. Um, and that like, next point is, is the whole issue about image contrast. And it's a little bit of a psychological topic as well, because um, sometimes when an image has low contrast, it might appear to be more blurry. At least subjectively, if you have a structure that um, is very has a very different color or brightness from the background, subjectively sometimes it might appear to be more crisp and, and, and more sharp, even though actually it's not. It's a little bit of a psychological thing. Um, but in any case, so what I would like to suggest that you do is, is, is I would suggest that you play around a little bit with the condenser aperture diaphragm. Now, the condenser is an optical system which can be found beneath the stage of the microscope. And in many cases, there is a horizontal lever um, that can be yeah, pushed left and right. And this lever um, does several things at the same time. And the most notable thing is, is it seems to change the brightness of the image. Yeah, that's correct, but it should not be used to um, adjust brightness. But rather, it has a, a few other effects. First of all, um, when you close uh, the condenser diaphragm, then the image uh, becomes darker, sure, uh, but also the depth of field increases. This means that some parts of the image become less blurry because they're in focus again, and also the contrast increases. And this also gives you uh, a subjectively a perception that um, the image um, is less blurry. So my first suggestion is, is to play around a little bit with this condenser aperture diaphragm because it's very easy to do, of course, and it might actually produce the results that uh, you would like to have. Now, some low-cost introductory microscopes don't have that. Yeah, and then there is unfortunately no uh, work around here um, because uh, yeah, that's uh, simply not only the diaphragm itself, but there's also a whole optical system involved here. So yeah, so the diaphragm improves contrast, which increases the subjective perception of clarity and also depth of field. But at the same time, it also reduces resolution. It's a little bit of a paradox. You think that the image is sharper and clearer and more crisp, but in reality, it has a lower resolution. Um, yeah, that's, uh, but psychologically, we might think uh, that uh, yeah, it, it's actually of a better quality. So another point is, is the following. You can increase contrast also by, by digitally enhancing the image. Now, um, I'm doing this all the time uh, when I take photographs or especially when I make YouTube videos uh, for my YouTube channel. Um, I Pretty much every clip that I do, I, I increase uh, the contrast a little bit. So what I make sure is, is I make sure that the, the brightest parts of the microscopic image are just barely white and the darkest part, parts of the image are just uh, barely black. You have to, of course, take care that not too many areas are white and too many areas are completely black. Otherwise, it kind of looks a little bit, uh, yeah, too bright or too dark, but um, and you have to be careful that you don't overdo it, otherwise you're going to lose again some inf in image information. But generally, I pretty much uh, digitally adjust uh, all of the images, and usually this gives it a much fresher look and a much more yeah, crisp look, even though actually you're not really generating any more Im image information here. But uh, that's something that I also highly recommend that you do, and you'll be surprised of what you're able to uh, to improve here. Now, um, not everyone um, you know, wants to publish images, um, and sometimes um, you just want to increase uh, the, the crispiness of the image uh, simply by doing visual observation. 
And here there are yet uh, two more possibilities that you can do, um, or two or three more possibilities. And uh, one of them is, is that you use uh, filters uh, for your microscope, um, specifically patch stops. Um, one of the patch stops is a, is, is a dark field patch stop, uh, which is very cheap to make. Uh, if you don't have one, then you can easily make it yourself. You place it into the filter holder and this uh, essentially um, puts the specimen bright on a dark background. And this can really sometimes also, because it reduces glare sometimes, um, it can really also make details visible that you normally would not see. So dark field is really something that I can recommend. Again, it doesn't work well with all specimens, uh, but that's what you have to try out. And uh, related to dark field is so-called Reinberg illumination. And this one uh, works with color filters. And this, uh, for example, is able to produce uh, water organisms that appear to be, I don't know, any color you like, red on a blue background, if this is what you like. Uh, depending on the filters that you use. It's a, the method is related to dark field, um, but uh, you have to make your own filters. Yeah? And uh, this is called optical staining um, because you're not adding any chemicals to change the color of the specimens. And by yeah, and still it gives you um, sometimes the impression that the image is more crisp and, and, and clear. Now, some, sometimes the structures, however, um, yeah, you cannot make visible this way either, and it's uh, the, uh, very fine and, and blurry. In this case, um, you pr might have to resort to staining, chemically staining um, some of the specimens. And here, I really have to tell you, this is a huge uh, area all in itself. Um, but uh, if uh, you want to get started, then I can highly recommend that you get yourself a small bottle of methylene blue and that you dilute it down. And methylene blue is one of those standard stains that, that you can add. Um, yeah, of course, it's uh, reacting with living things and it's going to kill them off as well. Um, but you can make some uh, structures visible that uh, otherwise are not visible and this increases the contrast. And then you might also get the impression that the image is less blurred and more crisp. Yeah, and then last but not least, um, image contrast can be improved by reducing image glare, especially for phot photography work. This is now again a, um, a special thing that uh, mostly the high-end microscopes have, and that is called Köhler illumination. And Köhler illumination is um, again another diaphragm and an optical system which is uh, located right above the lamp. And uh, it ensures that uh, there is not too much light uh, going into the objective. So it kind of uh, blocks out all of the other light that is not necessary. And this also reduces the glare, um, especially for photography work. It can really increase uh, the contrast and also the perceived clarity significantly. Um, however, it's not found in all microscopes. and. Um, in some specimens, the effect is not very strongly visible. And if you don't have cool illumination, most people don't, um, then you simply also have to improve the image a little bit uh, by en enhancing the contrast uh, digitally. Yeah. yeah, so that's basically, it's, I'm gonna, just going to summarize this here again a little bit. You can play around with diaphragm, digital enhancement, you can use filters, you can use chemical staining. And then uh, if your microscope has cooler illumination, you can also try that. All of these things will increase the contrast and also yeah, improve image quality. And uh, then you might not realize uh, that uh, the image is actually slightly blurred. Yeah, but that's uh, only part of it, or part of my whole answer, because I have to go on now. <laughs> I'm not even at, at, at half yet. Um, yeah, so the next one, uh, we have to deal a little bit with the actual specimen itself, because sometimes you have to blame the specimen if uh, the image is a little bit blurry. This is... Uh, for example, especially in the case if you have uh, specimens that are thin and flat and large, for example, like leaves, if you put a whole leaf, usually thin ones like uh, from water plants from Illudia, you can do a whole mount. You just take a small leaf and you put it directly on a microscope slide with a cover glass on top. They're thin enough that you can do that. Um, but sometimes uh, those leaves are not flat and uh, they're warped a little bit and uh, sometimes they're so warped that they're even able to kind of lift up the cover glass a little bit. And uh, this can now result in the problem that uh, some parts of the specimen are in focus and other parts are, are out of focus. Yeah? So uh, you have to then basically refocus everything and then a different part of the image is going to move into focus and out of focus. Yeah? So you're kind of chasing around. Um, in this case, what I suggest is, is that you uh, simply scan the image a little bit and, and look for a place uh, where, which is mostly in focus, obviously. Or you can try to press down the cover glass a little bit more. Or um, another suggestion is, is uh, especially if you have small leaves and uh, flat structures, that you simply cut it apart. 
um, because uh, this also kind of takes away the strain of the leaf and uh, will also then result um, yeah, in those parts being more flat. Yeah. So or you press it down. Yeah. So but in in, in any case, uh, this is a uh, one problem that uh, you can can be easily easily resolved. Now, if this is not uh, not possible, then you can do something called image stacking. This is again going a little technical right now. Um, what you can do is, is in this case is you can take uh, several pictures um, using a different focus and uh, then you use software um, for example there is a free version called Picole, picole.de um, or there is a commercial version also called Helicon Focus which I think has a one month uh, free use I'm not affiliated with those companies yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm using them myself um, and uh, when you do that you're, uh, these programs are able to combine the different parts uh, of the different pictures that you've taken into one final picture which is completely in focus um, and uh, this also reduces the blurriness if blurriness is due to um, out of focus parts yeah so that is one thing um, now in some cases uh, especially when you look at uh, water organisms like uh, i don't know certain ciliates that uh, move around quite quickly um, then they can also move vertically so they can move in and out of focus especially if you use too much water too much mounting medium um, they will actually appear to be blurry because they also move vertically. And what you have to do now is, is you have to make sure that you don't use too much water um, and that uh, those microorganisms are sandwiched in between the cover glass and the microscope slide. Um, sometimes even this is uh, not uh, quite easily possible. Sometimes they're so small that even they, um, uh, even the sandwiching doesn't work and that they are still able to move. And in this case, I suggest that you use the so-called the Vaseline method. The Vaseline method, uh, you take your cover glass and you cover the edges, the sides of the cover glass with a little bit of Vaseline. And um, in the center you have your specimen in a little small drop of water and the Vaseline will act like a glue. Um, and when you press down on the cover glass, uh, then the Vaseline will spread and it will actually keep uh, the cover glass very close to the microscope slide. And this sandwiches the water microorganisms between the cover glass and the slide. And uh, this uh, compresses them as well. And uh, because they're so flat, uh, this means that you can also go up quite high with the magnification. And all of the parts of the cell will still be in focus and not be blurry. It's a pretty cool method. If you overdo it, you're just going to pop the cell, unfortunately. <laughs> also happened to me already. Uh, but um, this is basically a suggested method and uh, because this also really restricts the horizontal movement uh, of uh, the microorganisms, um, this means that when you take uh, a picture of those microorganisms, then you will also not get as much motion blur um, because, yeah, because of the exposure time, especially at high magnifications, the light is, is intensity is quite low that the camera receives and then you need a longer exposure time. And uh, this uh, basically then also means that <laughs> then the image is going to be blurred um, because the specimen moves. But if you sandwich it in between a cover glass and, and slide, uh, and if you restrict the movement, both vertical movement and horizontal movement, um, then you're able to get a much uh, better and much uh, more clear image. Now, the next one, uh, the next uh, point I'd like to talk about, we're still staying with uh, specimen preparation, but this now has to do something with the production of, of uh, permanent mounts. Because um, even here, it's important uh, that uh, the permanent mount is properly made um, so that you get a good image clarity. And uh, this is getting a little bit uh, technical here right now. Um, and here we need to talk a little bit about the cover glass thickness uh, that uh, the microscope objectives are designed for. Um, the microscope objectives generally have a number of 0 0.17 written on them. And this means that uh, the objective has been calculated to uh, to perform best at a uh, thickness of the cover glass of 0 0.17 millimeters. Um, and most cover glasses indeed have a, a thickness between 0 0.15 and 0 0.17 uh, millimeters, so that all, that's fine. However, uh, when you now make a permanent uh, microscope mount, it can be that all of a sudden the image quality drops. And this is uh, especially the case when you are using too much mounting medium. Um, and then this means that there is above the specimen a layer of mounting medium before there's the cover glass. And on top of that, there is the cover glass. Yeah. So this means uh, the, if you use too much mounting medium, you're essentially increasing the effective thickness of the cover glass. 
And this reduces the image quality because the objectives expect 0.17 millimeters. And what you're doing then is, is you're adding uh, another a couple fractions of a millimeter of mounting medium. So what you have to make sure is, is when you make your permanent mounts is you have to make sure that the specimen or the part of the specimen that you want to look at is almost touching the cover glass. And uh, this is actually the reason why some people, um, or why some people are using cover glass thicknesses, which is which are thinner than 0.17 millimeters, like 0.15 millimeters, because you want to account for the 0 0.02 uh, millimeters of mounting medium that you're going to have above the specimen. And this is now it might, might not sound like a lot. But at higher magnifications, this actually becomes evident and uh, you're losing image quality because of that, especially at the higher magnifications. At the lower magnifications, it really doesn't uh, make, uh, make a lot of a difference yeah? at uh, the lower numerical apertures. But at the higher ones, um, it, it can have a significant effect. So uh, in other words, uh, make your permanent mounts in such a way that uh, there is a very little mounting medium um, between the cover glass and the specimen. Um, yeah, so how do you do that? <laughs> um, one way of, of doing that is, is uh, making sure that uh, um, while the microscope slide is drying to maybe invert the microscope slide because gravity is, is going to act uh, on um, the specimen and then it's going to sink down. And if you simply allow the microscope slide to dry normally, then um, what's going to happen is the specimen is going to sink down to the microscope slide. You have the mounting medium over it. And on top of that, you have the cover glass floating. Um, and uh, yeah, so the specimen does not touch the cover glass. And by inverting the slide, um, you make sure that the specimen sinks down and then it will touch the cover glass. No, I know this is kind of fancy, <laughs> um, okay? Um, so is there any other workaround here? Yeah, there is a pretty expensive workaround. I mean, especially high-end microscopes uh, allow for that. Of, yeah, There's Some uh, microscope objective have, have a so-called a correction collar. So there is a ring that you can turn on the microscope objective um, to compensate for the cover glass thickness. Um, they are expensive um, and not all companies offer them and uh, yeah but I'm just saying that uh, why am I saying this is I'm just saying uh, simply to illustrate how important um, the whole issue of cover glass thickness and uh, th thickness of the mounting medium is uh, they even have uh, special optics that are able to correct for that uh, so yeah so this is uh, also something that I just wanted to mention here and uh, the two last ones are uh, the two last points are really uh, something that I have also in the experienced uh, occasionally because I'm a teacher and I um, also instruct microscopy to my students and in the educational sector yeah, you won't believe uh, what you're able to see um, and uh, one of the possibilities uh, yeah, is, is indeed you don't get a good picture because the microscope objective is dirty. Uh, be careful. Um, not every time when you see something, a blurred image, uh, not every time the microscope objective is, is dirty. And, and I really would warn against immediately starting to clean um, yeah, <laughs> the microscope objectives yeah? if there is no reason to clean. As a matter of fact, there shouldn't be a reason to clean them, yeah? except maybe the oil immersion objective where you have to remove the immersion oil. Um, but otherwise, why should they get dirty? Okay, uh, you're, you're not supposed to touch them anyway, <laughs> unless you kind of dip them into the mounting medium or you know, or the water or whatever. In this case, you yeah you have to do <laughs> some cleaning. But uh, in if you want to check if your objective is really dirty or not, um, you don't really see this very well simply by looking at the objective. What you have to do is is you have to take it out. You have to screw it out from the microscope and look at uh, look through the objective from behind. So you hold the objective against a bright surface, maybe your window or a lamp, and you look at it uh, from behind and then you're able to see the front lens of the objective much better. And you're also going to be able to see any dirt that is on the lens. And uh, if there's just a little bit, you just might want to ignore it. But if it looks very smeared almost, and if, if this already looks blurry, uh, then there is no way that you're ever going to get a clear image. Um, okay. And then this is actually a sign that probably uh, you have dipped the objective uh, yeah, into some kind of a substance, uh, mounting medium, water, uh, immersion oil, and this kind of covers it up and, and then you're not able to get a clear picture. Yeah. So the next one leads us directly over to the next point and this is, uh, yeah, do not use the, do not use the 100 times oil immersion objective uh, without immersion oil. That's one thing uh, because it's going to be really blurry and you're going to have a problem finding the focus and you're going to end up crashing the objective into the microscope slide. 
yeah, that's of course uh, a problem. And uh, even worse <laughs> yet is, is to not use non-oil immersion objectives with immersion oil. I don't know how often I have to say this. Um, it happens all the time. There's some, some funny stories as well. It's actually not funny. I talked to a representative of, of, of the microscope company that supplied me the microscope and I told him that uh, I, as a teacher, am so struggling because, and we're removing now the immersion oil from the lab in the school. It's because students uh, keep on confusing the immersion oil with mounting medium and all these things. And they have dipped uh, the yeah non-oil immersion objectives uh, into immersion oil. And I basically told my representative that and he started to laugh. He says, yeah, doesn't only happen in, in, in schools, uh, but they now have a very expensive repair job to do a very expensive microscope objective that was also dipped into immersion oil, even though it's not supposed to be like that. And they had, had to completely disassemble the objective to get give it a clean, to give it to clean it. Yeah. So you said this, it happens even in, in, in laboratories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just want to say this is really something where you have to be a little careful. It's also one of the reasons why I don't like oil immersion so much. And I'm not, uh, we're not using oil immersion, also not in the educational sector. I've, I consider it a little bit unfortunate that so many microscope companies um, still supply their microscopes with a hundred times oil immersion objective instead of a 60 times non-oil or dry objective. I think they're much more versatile. Uh, but I guess it's uh, one of the reasons is marketing because they want to sell microscopes with a very high magnification um, yeah, for, for marketing reasons. So I'm, I'm, I'm sidetracking again. <laughs> I actually, I'm supposed to talk a little bit about the clarity of image quality here. Uh, but, uh, but immersion oil and image uh, quality is, is somehow connected here as well. Well, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to not stop yet uh, because I did promise you at the very beginning uh, a little uh, trick. I don't know if it's called a trick or a little suggestion on how you can make uh, very good looking images. And that is, is not to use a sharpening filter, but to use so-called image stitching. I mean, I already talked about stacking where you're combining the focus of different images, but actually you can also increase the image clarity by using stitching. And what I mean is the following, you take a specimen, I don't know, I'm, I would like to do this with uh, cross sections of, of, of plant stems or plant roots, uh, they're quite common. Um, the permanent mounts, um, and you, which can sometimes they are even supplied uh, when you actually buy a microscope, sometimes they even provide those. And um, what you do is, is you take many overlapping pictures of this specimen. Um, sometimes you have to refocus again because the image is not completely flat or the specimen is not completely flat. Uh, doesn't matter. You take a whole bunch of overlapping images and you make a two-dimensional panorama image using a program, which is also free. Um, it's called MSIs, Microsoft Image Composite Editor. MSI's uh, image composite editor it's a free program and it does two-dimensional panoramas and it will stitch together the images into one large panorama so what you're essentially doing is, is you're creating a, a pretty large micrograph and uh, it looks quite nice uh, yeah um, so even if your camera is only able to capture a very small field of a view this way by making it this two-dimensional panorama you are able to actually increase the field of view quite a bit and you can do that using also the higher magnification objectives so let's say you're using a hundred times let's say a, 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 the 10 times objective or even the 40 times objective the 40 times objective will already uh, make it a little bit blurry because i mentioned that the magnification is already so high but it doesn't matter you're going to take a few hundred pictures overlapping pictures of the specimen they're all slightly blurry because of the limits of uh, resolution that we talked about and then you stitch them together and then you do the following. You have this large micrograph, this large picture, and then you're able to make it smaller again. You scale it down again. And by scaling it down, what happens is, is you still have a picture which is of decent size because you combine so many of them together. Um, but you're not going to see the blurriness anymore because you made it smaller. Okay, um, so this means subjectively you will get a picture, a micrograph that is pretty crisp. But ultimately, you have done taken the picture with um, yeah a very high uh, very high magnification yeah. But because you stitched it together, you get a good field of view again, 
and then you have uh, essentially a picture that uh, you can publish and uh, you can show and it looks very cr uh, crisp and, and very nice um, but uh, you're actually not showing uh, the details the blurry details so to say uh, because uh, you've uh, reduced uh, the overall image size again uh, so that you when you zoom in you're going to reach the limits of the picture resolution before you're actually going to reach the limits of the microscope resolution if I may say it like that yeah yeah so this is kind of the the thing that I wanted to give you an overview and I think because it was such a long um, podcast I'm going to or episode podcast episode I'm simply going to run you through all of those points again yeah, the first point was is maybe uh, you cannot improve the image quality because you're already at the limit of resolution. Uh, then you can try to increase uh, the contrast by using either the diaphragm or some digital methods or filters or staining. Um, you have to make sure that the image is completely flat, not the image, the, the specimen should be completely flat uh, to prevent that some parts of the specimen are out of focus. Um, I talked about the Vaseline method, yeah. For example, you can um, also try to uh, uh, overcome the problem of specimen preparation by ensuring that uh, the, the mounting medium layer is very thin. That's also very important um, because uh, of the yeah, not too much mounting medium above the specimen. Yeah, the whole issue about uh, cleaning the objective um, and also the issue of immersion oil and that immersion oil is really necessary for the 100 times oil immersion objective but you should not use immersion oil um, on the other objectives um, yeah it's actually it might break them so i think uh, i'm going to leave it at that um, yeah i wish you all the best uh, and uh, enjoy microscopy and uh, see you around next time bye bye